Hey viewers, this is the next video in my bookshelf series, and I actually have to redo this video because it disappeared from the first time I did it. So this is shelf number two, and shelf number three is also going to be this outfit because I'm going to do that today, and all of the other ones were recorded before, so all of these are pre-recorded. You'll see them in a while, but anyway, this is shelf two. Shelf two of the main bookshelf in the fiction section is the shelf that's always behind me in videos, so I'm going to clear this off and then show you what's there. Okay, forgive me if I go through these things really quickly, but since I'm doing them again, re-recording them, and it took forever before, I'm gonna try and make it a little bit shorter. So Alice in Wonderland is up here for some reason instead of on the movie shelf. So here we go. We left off with the Dresden Files and a Halloween book, and we are going on to the D section, Moll Flanders, Daniel Defoe. I had to read this for 18th century British literature, but I had borrowed it from someone at the time, and then after I finished that class, I found this copy of it, so now I have my own. The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexandre Dumas. Read it in high school, love it, saw the movie, etc, etc. The Spirit Catches You When You Fall Down by Anne Fadiman is a new one from my class, so I talked about that one before. The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. This copy is actually marked up in purple pen because we were required to take notes in it in high school, and I absolutely love this book. Harriet the Spy by Louise Fitzhugh. Now a major motion picture. Isn't that so weird to think of because that movie was so long ago? Grendel by John Gardner. Obviously it goes along with the Beowulf story because this is a story, uh, kind of a spin-off from the point of view of Grendel. Grendel the monster. It's very cute. Did it for my myths, legends, folklore, and fairy tales class my freshman year of college. Similarly, we have politically correct bedtime stories, which are fairy tales given a politically correct spin. They're very funny, and these are by James Finn Garner, and there's actually also a sequel, Once Upon a More Enlightened Time, More Politically Correct Bedtime Stories. Very fun if you can get a hold of those. Coraline by Neil Gaiman. Got myself a copy of it after I borrowed it from someone else and read it, and then I saw the movie which I own, and now I have my own copy. Life Support by Tess Gerritsen. This was from my Genetics, Identity, and Popular Culture class, which I mentioned before, which goes along with uh, Oryx and Crake and Lilith's Brood. That was for the same class. I honestly don't really remember what this one is about because we read so many of them, but it's a medical thriller. I know that, so if you're into medical thrillers. Lord of the Flies by William Golding. Had to read it in high school. Love it. I know a lot of people really don't like it, but I do. The John Green section, looking for a last and Paper Towns, and I like this cover of Paper Towns much better than the one with the face on it because I think this one is more appropriate to the story. And now that I have The Fault in Our Stars, actually, you should have already seen a video where I opened it. Beowulf, the new translation by Dick Ringler. This is the copy we used for class. The Maltese Falcon by Dashiell Hammett. Read it for one of my classes, I think, freshman year, or it might have been sophomore year, Intro to Literary Studies, um, but I actually didn't finish it. Nick Hornby, High Fidelity. I rescued this book from a recycle bin in high school. The librarian and I were going through the halls on the last day of school and people had thrown out and recycled books that they didn't want and notebooks that hadn't been used and everything like that, so I rescued that from there. Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro. It's a novel about cloning. That was from my genetics identity and popular culture class as well. Daisy Miller by Henry James. I also rescued that from the recycle bin at high school, so it wasn't required for my class. It was required for another class and then I just got it. It's really short. Wonderful Wonderful Times by Elfrida Jelinek was for my World Lit class as well. Good Poems by Garrison Keillor, or selected and introduced by Garrison Keillor as heard on the, some radio show. I think it says The Writer's Almanac. I never actually heard it, but apparently that's what it's from. This was required reading for Intro to Literary Studies. Barbara Kingsolver, The Poisonwood Bible. I have not read this yet, but I have it because I have Barbara Kingsolver's Prodigal Summer. Prodigal Summer was the required reading for the summer before my freshman year, so this was my freshman reading, and I mentioned before that Mountains Beyond Mountains was another year's summer reading, and in a later video you'll see the books that I have at school with me, which was this past year's summer reading, so the summer of 2011 was Persepolis, you'll see that one later. So that is why I have those. The Phantom of the Opera, I have not read the book, but I have finally seen the Broadway. Not live, we saw it in theaters, the live broadcast from London. Death in Venice and Other Stories by Thomas Mann from World Lit. The Water Mirror by Kai Meyer is one of the only books that I bought at Walmart without knowing what it was about at all, and this is the book where I get the quote that I say every once in a while about magic is just science that men do not understand, not yet or no longer. That's this book. It's actually book one in a series, but I've never read the other one, so it's the Dark Reflections series by Kai Meyer. Standing Up to Mr. O by Claudia Mills is a book that I got as a present from my fifth grade teacher. He selected three books that were going to be gifts 
text to everybody and then everybody in the class got one of those three and they were based on our personality, I guess, kind of. So I got standing up to Mr. O because it's a story about a girl who doesn't want to dissect animals, but the teacher, Mr. O, is her favorite teacher and she really doesn't want to disappoint him, but she has to keep taking failing grades because she refuses to dissect animals on her principles. So it's a story about how she struggles with either making her favorite teacher happy or making herself happy, so I'm pretty sure that's why my teacher picked that one for me. These books that are hidden here, um, first of all, I did it not only to hide them, but also because they take up so much room otherwise, and this is just much more economic in space, but this is da 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 the Twilight series. I know, don't kill me. I got Twilight as a gift from someone when I started working for them. They bought me Twilight, so I thought, well, hey, I didn't spend the money on it, so I'll read it. And then, of course, I can't fin I can't not finish a series. Someone else bought me New Moon and Eclipse and Breaking Dawn, so I did not pay for any of these. They were all gifts. We're almost to the end of the shelf, and actually, I realized that I moved standing up to Mr. O over there because I needed room for whatever was on the shelf, but it actually goes after that alphabetically because we have Kai Meyer, Stephanie Meyer, Claudia Mills. The next two books are books two and three from the Seventh Tower series, Castle and Aenor. I have read the first one, which is The Fall, but I don't own it. I only have these because I got them from the Scholastic Book Fair and they looked cool, so I've had these since sometime in elementary school. Um, and there are books beyond this in the series too, but I don't think I've read all of them. And here we have The Things They Carried by Tim O'Brien, which was the common reading last summer, the summer of 2010. And then Tim O'Brien actually came to my college and spoke to us about the book and some other stuff. And I also read his book In the Lake of the Woods, which a friend of mine bought and had him sign, and that's also a really good story. I, so I like Tim O'Brien. I like him as a person because I got to meet him, and then I also really like his writing so far. I didn't think I would like it because it's about war, but it's about so much more than that. So that is the end of shelf two. That is the shelf that's behind me in my videos. So thank you very much for watching, and I am about to re-record shelf number three because that one's lost too. So I'll be doing this shelf next. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye!